Good yep. morning. You know who it is? Your favorite cousin checking in. Young Jock in the streets. Morning. Take over with the lovely Miss Shanika and my guy, Shouty Shouty himself. Now, this morning, we have a very, very, very important uh, public figure on the on the line. And we got some questions. I don't think, uh, after listening to several interviews, I don't think any question is too tough for this guy. But we're going <laughs> to... We're going to roll them out today. On the phone, we have Georgia Governor Brian Kemp. Good morning, my guy. Hey, morning, guys. Good to be back on with you. Yeah. Good morning. It's a pleasure. Yes. So, Governor Kemp, you know, there's a lot of controversy around this Senate Bill 202. Um, you know, it's kind of one of those things. After you, you sit back, the way it's rolled out, someone says, hey, there's this situation going on where the governor's signing the bill behind closed doors. People don't know what's going on. If you could just give us a little um, enlightenment on how this procedure actually uh, works. What's the protocol? Because a lot of people are trying to put uh, this propaganda on it like this is something you can't do. And I just I, I can't see people just doing something if it's illegal so publicly. You know what I'm saying? So we just kind of want to know what's the procedure and protocol when it comes to signing a bill uh, into law like this? Yeah. And you know, that may be one of the best questions I've got gotten in all of this, which is, I mean, I've done probably 20 interviews in the last two days, really just trying to get the truth out there and trusting people quite honestly to really absorb the truth and then, you know, gain, you know, grab their own opinion of this versus what's being forced uh, on them by a lot of activists, third party groups, and quite honestly, a lot of prominent people in other states that really don't have any idea what this law is doing or any any idea about past election laws and procedures that we already have in place in, in Georgia. So I appreciate that. I know uh, I commented yesterday on CNBC on Squawk Box about some comments that were made about there were no public hearings on this bill and it was rushed and beside, signed behind closed doors. And that's really all ridiculous. Um, you know, the process for the bill, if you really look back after the election, Speaker Ralston appointed a House committee to start working on all these issues that came up after the election, you know, whether they were missed facts, procedural things, potential fraud, whatever it, it was, it, you know, that was driving uh, a lot of people, depending on you know, what their viewpoint was if you were a legislature. And so that went on even before the General Assembly started in January, the middle of January. It's always the second Monday in January. Mm -hmm. You know, here we are um, at the first of April and the bill just passed, you know, whatever it was, three or four days ago. So really there's been months of processes, committee hearings, input from the legislature. The final bill actually has some ideas that were introduced legislatively by members of the Democratic Party. So there was a lot of thought. There was a bill that passed the Senate, a bill that passed the House. We were very involved, uh, especially at the end as things narrowed, because I had said early on, you know, there was things that I supported like the voter ID requirement, which is free in Georgia for absentee ballots by mail, but things that concerned me like taking away the no excuse absentee voting and things of that nature. And so when, when the bill got passed, we knew it was exactly what was in it. We also knew uh, what a lot of the activists were gonna try to do uh, to, to pressure on the bill. And that's why I just decided to go ahead and sign it. And then, as you know, I made a public address to explain that to the people of our state. People were making a big deal of that, but that's not unusual. I signed hundreds of bills every year. Governor Deal did, Governor Purdue did, and I think Governor Barnes and others did. Um, I mean, you can't sign every bill in public. There's, you know, hundreds of them that pass. And, and that's what I did and then, and then made the address and, you know, it's gone on from there. So that's really, regardless of when we talk about what's in the bill, but regardless of that, that's how the process worked. Okay. All right. Thank you. We appreciate that. Yeah. All right. Um, Governor Kent, um, I, for one, I am not a, a Republican at all, but um, I can respect you and I, I kind of see you as a really fair guy, um, especially with um, the Ahmaud Aubrey situation and you passing the law to prevent people being um, vigilantes and, um, and making their own arrests, making their civil, uh, uh, own civil arrests. 
Um, I also like the way that you kept Georgia moving during a, a pandemic. You know, you kept the people of, of this state working. You were, um, you know, definitely um, targeted. People had a lot to say about you, but <laughs> you stood firm and people were working. And so I do believe that the state is progressing because of your, you know, really great decision making skills skills now trump did not want to stand by you <laughs> um when you made that decision and i was like whoa that was kind of shady but it, it worked out for the best so when these accusations came up about you wanting to suppress the vote of african americans i was just like no let me really review this and um and read what's on this bill to see why they are saying these things about him. And I just, I honestly, after uh, reading things on this bill, I can't figure out what it is that people are really mad about. Why do you think that this propaganda has been spread about you? Well, you, you make some great points and hopefully we can talk about the citizen's arrest bill. We're the first state in the country to pass that, um, you know, um, the whole Ahmad Aubrey thing, I mean, we've talked about that before, but we've taken action. I'm very proud of that. That vote last night in the General Assembly was 169 to zero. So it's a pretty amazing day that Georgia was the first state in the country to repeal yes. his arrest. And I mean, we're also protecting people's individual rights to protect themselves and their property. But, you know, it's just wrong for people to be, you know, hunted down, gunned right. down in the middle of a public street. But regardless of that, you know, that's what's been very frustrating for me. And it's one reason I'm going directly to folks like you just to get the truth out about the bill. And I, I, I can promise people, I can look in this camera and promise your listeners and viewers, I am telling you the truth. I can't make people believe me, obviously, but all I can do is tell the truth. And this bill doesn't keep African-Americans from having access to the polls or cut down on opportunities for them to vote or any other Georgian for that matter, whether they're brown, white, Republican, Democrat, or whatever, the bill actually expands the opportunity for people to do weekend voting. And I think the reason that, that people were so upset is you know, early on there were provisions in certain parts of bills that were floating around the General Assembly that were changing those processes. And obviously there was a lot of people that had concern about those things, including myself, and at the end of the day, that's not what passed. Um, so, you know, you can't convict somebody for a crime that didn't happen. So that did not happen. But what happened was in the final bill, uh, we actually add two mandatory Saturdays to the bill. But previously, there was only one. So every county in the state will have two Saturday voting days. Every county in the state has the option. They don't have to. A lot of smaller counties don't want to open on Sunday, but a lot of the bigger counties do. You have the option of doing two Sundays of voting in Georgia now before it was only one. So there's no question that that expands the opportunity for people to vote. The, um, the leveling of the polling hours and, and things of that nature that are in the bill, if you really study it, 134 of 159 counties will now offer more early voting hours of opportunities for people to vote than previously was in the legislation. The drop boxes, you know, people have made a big deal about the drop boxes. Now every single county is mandated to have a drop box. Certain counties last election didn't even have a drop box. And, you know, a lot of people say, well, you're taking away this or you're restricting drop boxes. And that's not what this bill's doing. It's making sure that the drop boxes are in a secure location it's done based on the formula. So obviously Fulton County has more voters. They're gonna have more drop boxes than, you know, say Hall County or Athens Clark County where I'm from. Those are still there, but also voters, if they have a hard time finding a drop box, they can simply go to their polling location or an elections office and hand the elections official that ballot. We just wanna make sure that that is, is secure. The other thing that's doing that I think is important for all Georgians, whether you're black, white or whatever, is this requiring the county elections officials to continuously count ballots until every vote is counted. So there's not gonna be a starting and stopping and stop in the middle of the night, come back the next day. People have doubt about, well, what happened in those hours where nobody was there and the monitors weren't there. 
And that's just really more of a, a security measure. And then if I have time, I'll mention the water issue because I know that's been a big issue with a lot of people, the food and water. We yes. had restrictions within 150 feet of polling locations of anyone, campaigns, candidates, third party groups, basically anybody interfering with a voter. And that's been done for a reason for decades in the state and all across the country is to make sure that people aren't intimidated or harassed when they're in line, also slowing the process down. But still, this legislation makes it clear that county officials can set up a water station as, if one's needed. The voter can bring in food, water, they can bring in their lunch and eat it in line if they would like. Or before they get in within that 150 feet, which if you look at that, and I have as a campaign, because I've stood at 151 feet and waved signs before and done that kind of thing, uh, you can hand out water, you can hand out your campaign cards, you can put your signs up. Third party groups could cook hamburgers or hand out pizza or whatever they wanted to do. So for people saying that we're taking away the ability and, and even the president saying this, he got a four Pinocchios on his fact check from the Washington Post. that That's just not that's just not correct. But the other thing that I've been telling a lot of people, and especially if you want to specifically look at African-Americans and people of color, why are those individuals standing in line that long? Why should voters have to stand in a line for four, five, six hours where they would actually right. need food or water? This bill addresses that by the amount of equipment that precincts have to have for per capita right. voting population there to hopefully speed that process up. And if there's times that voting gets to be over an hour, this law mandates that in the next election, the elections officials will have to do something about that. Um, so that is the facts of the bill, and I'm glad to answer any more specific questions. Governor, yes. Governor um, do you feel um, any pressure from the Republican Party with the state of Georgia turning blue as opposed to red? Well, you know, my personal opinion, if you really look at the number and the data, is we didn't turn blue. Uh, you know, okay. President, Biden, Pre President Biden won the election. Obviously, Senator Warnock and Senator Ossoff won the runoffs. I think there's a lot of political reasons for that. But if you actually look at the November 3rd elections results, you know, there was libertarians in the vote with the Republicans and the Democrats in the presidential race. Uh, so, you know, libertarians generally vote more with the Republicans. So if you if you add those votes up, it wasn't a, a blue wave. But regardless, you know, the Democrats won the won Georgia in the presidential race. They got into the runoffs and won those. But like if you look at the legislature, the Republican Senate candidates that had campaigned on the agenda that I've been working on and pushing the last two years, they got 53.7 percent of the vote. If you add every Republican Senate vote up compare it to the Democrats. The state House candidates got over 51% of the vote. So Republicans won at the state level, lost at the national level, which to me is just a good lesson that we need to keep talking about the things that people care about in Georgia, like the citizens arrest statute. You know, last year we did the anti-hate crimes legislation. We gave the largest teacher pay raise in the history of the state. We passed 50 health care bills. You know, look, we can all agree and disagree on different policies for health care. But one thing we can all agree on is screwed up and yes. it's expensive. And we need to do something to make it accessible for more people and more affordable for more people. And that's exactly what we're doing with the Patients First Act and our waivers that we got from the federal government. Now, people may disagree with the policy, but look, to me, we passed 50 health care bills in the last two years dealing with these issues. Uh, to let people know we're dang doing something about it. And then our economy, you know, I, you mentioned this early. I have fought very hard as a small business person myself for over 30 years. I know what it's like when you can't pay your bills and you're about to have to give the keys back to the bank. I have been there before. That's exactly what has happened to small business people and hardworking Georgians because of the pandemic. And this time it wasn't their fault. You know, they didn't have a bad product or a bad service. They just got screwed by an invisible virus. And, uh, you know, African-Americans and minority businesses have been impacted worse than what most. And we're working on that issue right now to bring that part of the economy back. 
and would love any feedback you guys or your viewers or listeners have. I will sincerely listen to them and try to help in that effort. Yes. Now, now I, I just want to ask you a real quick question, uh, Governor Kim, because I know you have to go. Um, it's amazing how uh, you can be judged or deemed out of your mind uh, for something uh, such as Ms. Shanika uh, mentioned earlier of you keeping the state of Georgia open. Um, and now seeming, it seems as if like a year later, like a whole year later, 300 something days later, these other cities and states are starting to follow suit and us having a, a very lowered uh, unemployment rate. Why, it's, it's so crazy. Like, why is it that <laughs> you weren't praised for that? You know what I'm saying? But you're you're kind of deemed on some low down, dirty shystiness for this new bill. I'm just trying to figure out because I know it gets really interesting in politics. People decide where they want to shed light. And that's where the whole hype. <laughs> I, think, I think I think I think the key the key word there may be politics. Um, yeah. which, you know, why I appreciate you guys having me on just to talk about what the what the truth is. And, you know, that's been frustrating. I've had a lot of my friends that have said, hey, you need to you need to be more boastful. You need to brag about you're the you know, other people getting credit for the economy. You're the first one that really decided to do it. You took all the heat, you know, this, that and other. But I, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of more of a workhorse and a show horse, I guess, I believe. I mean, look, I think people are really smart, and I've, I've told people this. Voters are smart. It doesn't matter whether you're a Democratic-leaning voter, voter or Republican. You know, all I can do is put the facts out there and, and tell people what my thinking is, what my heart is. I mean, I love this state. I want everybody to have an opportunity here. Um, you know, I grew up that way. I had those kind of opportunities, and uh, that's what I'm working hard for every day. And if, if people like that, you know, and they're a Democrat, I want them to vote for me or support me. And they don't even have to tell anybody, just do it. But you know, if they can't, I get that too. I'm still going to be their governor and I'm still going to work hard for them. Do you can point people can to tell? where they can find the bill to actually read it for themselves as opposed to being swayed by the media? Yeah, well, listen, that's one reason I'm going on every media outlet that I can, and I appreciate you guys having me on just to get the facts. I mean, we put all that out there. I put a you know, pretty long interview up uh, that I did with the CNBC Squawk Box yesterday. You know, we'll post this video. I think it's going to be important for a lot of these CEOs and other people to, to know that I'm coming to you know predominantly African-American audience to just stare the facts and let them decide for themselves. And that's what I've challenged people to do. You know, I, I said this, gosh, I think it was three days ago. I looked in the, cause somebody asked me about, you know, what do you, what do you tell African-Americans that have, that have struggled for the right to vote and fought and died and got beaten up and everything else. We have a lot of those great leaders, as you know, more than anybody right here in our state. Uh, and some of them are not with us anymore. And we paid great tribute to those, those individuals. And I've spoken to several, at several of those services in the halls of the, Georgia State Capitol, but but all I can do is put the truth out there, and and I believe that if people get the truth, they're going to figure out who's lying to them here and who is not. And at the end of the day, I think you know, speaking of politics, I think that'll be good politically for me. Yes, Governor, I did. Uh, I did have a question uh, about this bill because in the bill, uh, it removes the uh, state senator, it removes the secretary of state from, uh, from the board. And it also um, allows the state to delay the certification. And it also allows state, I mean, state officials to go into local uh, officials and to replace them. So could you explain that to me? Cause I'm, I don't really. Yeah, um, that was really something that was, uh a priority of the General Assembly, especially the House of Representatives, and I know Speaker Ross, and there's a really good article that the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, they haven't had many good articles, but that was one of them that just got to the facts of, you know, him him protecting the will of the House and the legislative branch is, is part of the checks and balances on the executive branch. Uh, so that was the reason that provision ended up being in the bill. That was a House priority. It, it leaves the Secretary of State as an ex officio member of the State Elections Board. The General Assembly will, will pick uh, the new member of the State Election Board. 
and I'll I'll just leave it with your viewers. You know, right now, obviously, that would be the Republicans that make that pick. But down the road, if the if the Democrats get the majorities, then they would make that pick. Um, you know, so you can argue whether that's a good provision or not. I'm I'm fine with it. I think the the board is a bipartisan board. It's always going to be bipartisan because both political parties, Republicans and Democrats, get an appointment. So you're always going to have the minority uh, party viewpoint on the state election board. Now, on to the part about overtaking a, a county, it will allow, it, and it's kind of like you have with school boards now, there's a process for the state to come in and basically take over a local school board if they're having issues like they've lost their accreditation, the board's dysfunctional. And this would be for a temporary uh, time until the new board can be appointed or whatever the process would be, and then it would revert back. Uh, so it's not, from, from my understanding, it's not going to change any certification or elections results. It would be something that would be done after that election for the next election. I think that will be very rare, if ever, um, but that's, that's basically what it does. And I can certainly get my folks to send you more detailed information than that if you need it. Uh, well, that was definitely a question uh, in my community because it, it, if that power was in play when Trump made the call trying to see if he could get some more votes added, then that could have been in play where they could take over and do what they had to do. Uh, well, yeah, and we'll, we'll follow up and get you the process because it's, it's not something that it can be done at the spur of the moment or, or very easily, I don't believe. But I'll, I'll give that to you guys and we can follow up. Uh, on that. I think, you know, the frustration from a lot of legislators is, and, and I don't want to, you know, just predominantly poke holes at Fulton, but over the years, there's been times where Fulton County's had issues. Uh, it seems like they never got, got fixed. And Chairman Pitts, who's a good friend of mine, he'll probably disagree with me on this. Um, but there's been times where people, when I was Secretary of State, wanted me to take over the elections office. But, um, you know, that, that was never done. And this was another, again, priority of the General Assembly. Uh, but we can get you that follow-up information. But well, definitely, uh, Governor Brian Kent, we definitely appreciate you, man. Always Thank a you. pleasure. Uh, yes, very yes, well sir. spoken. Uh, and I know that you got a lot of uh, more dispelling you have to do because people are just definitely trying to paint you as this, this, in this bad light right now. That's uh, right. Well, I can I I pray that you would continue to shed light on what it is that this bill really stands for, so the people can have a better understanding. And we can continue to move forward and be progressive. All right. Well, you you guys are great for giving me the opportunity. I applaud you for that. And listen, I hadn't forgot about us going to the varsity. Hey, hey. Down. Oh, we're going to the right. we're That's going. We're going. <laughs> we're getting there. Hey, <laughs> thank I, you. I, I, you just tuning in, <laughs> Governor Brian Kemp. And the streets want to take over. Definitely keep it right here for more. Keep it in the know. Young Jock in the streets want to take over. Yeah. All right. Have a good one. Awesome. Thank that was a great Governor. interview, you guys. Thank you so much, Governor Kemp, for uh, coming back on the show. We're going to take you up on that varsity offer soon as it gets hot outside. So I'm we'll ready. Y'all <laughs> take care. Happy Easter. All right. All right. Thank you.